Okay, students, welcome back. Uh, this week we're going to be creating uh, what I call an organizer. We're going to use the data grid view control in a Windows form application. And a, a data grid view allows you to show uh, tables of information, tables that have rows and columns of data, such as you see in this picture here. I've got the program running, and I want to show it to you real quick. This is what you'll be finishing by the end of this week. As you can see here, uh, we have just a basic Windows form application, and here we have the data. Uh, this is basically a collection of um, CDs or, or music that I have. You can see on the left-hand row or column you have the item name, which would be uh, the song or, or, or um, album, and on the right is the uh, artist who recorded it. And you are... Um, going to go ahead and do something similar to this. Okay, you can see how when I click up here at the top of each row, it organizes or yeah, it organizes that column based uh, alphabetically on um, that particular um, that particular column. Okay, so it um, it's kind of a neat little feature. All right, let's move on. First thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and create a brand new Windows Form application, and your know how to do that so I'm not going to go through all that but please go ahead and create it and save it as organizer okay O R G A N I Z E R okay here we have our Windows form application started the first thing you're going to want to do is give your um, form uh, change the name at the top of the form so you're going to want to find the uh, text property of the form and let's just call it organizer or my organizer something like that really only two things need to be put on there first of all I want you to put on a um, menu strip item and at the very top just put in one item and that would be your exit button it's all that you need to put okay and then in addition to that you're going to have what's called a data grid view so looking at all the tools here in the toolbox. Let's go down and find data grid view like you see here. Pull that out. And you'll see it's just a dark gray box. You'll want to resize it so it pretty much fills most of the window. Okay. The other thing you need to do with your grid view, data grid view object, is go ahead and change its name as well. You can see down here in the properties window it's called data grid view 1 by default. I want you to call it instead my grid. Okay, names like this cannot have spaces in them, so don't put a space in it. Uh, I'd encourage you to also write it exactly as I have it here, capital M Y, capital G R I D, my grid. Okay. The next part of this assignment is to create an XML file. I've actually created the uh, basic file for you and you can download it from the Moodle site. Let's go there. Here's the uh, course homepage of our Moodle course, and you can see for this week, topic 15 week, you can see right underneath our organizer assignment, you can see a file called data.xml. Go ahead and click that. Uh, once you do that, go to wherever you save all your projects and find the organizer. Uh, mine's actually called organizer2, but go ahead and find the organizer project and go ahead in to that folder and go ahead and save your data XML file right there inside the project folder. Do not put it inside the debug folder and go ahead and save it. Important note, do not change the name of the file at all. It should be called data.xml exactly as I have here. And that'll go ahead and download that. Now, in order to edit that file, we're just going to simply open it in a program called Notepad. Notepad is a simple text editor. You can always find it under Start all programs or programs and go into the accessories folder in your all programs area and you'll see a program called notepad n-o-t-e-p-a-d notepad don't use uh, wordpad or word or anything like that as that won't work so you need to, need to use notepad go ahead and open that up and now let's go and open this project that or excuse me this XML file that we just downloaded go back to where you saved it you probably won't see it right away when you go to open it because it's actually the program is only uh, configured to look for txt or text files but if you come down here and change this so that you're looking at all files as you can see here all files now 
sure enough, you're going to be able to see your data.xml file right there. Go ahead and open it. And this is what a data or an XML file looks like. In this case, you've got an XML tag at the top. It's similar to HTML if you've ever worked with that. And here we have another tag called the list tag. This is the opening tag here and the closing tag. And everything in between the list tags uh, represents the list. And inside the list, there are a bunch of items, as you can see here. These are all item tags. Now, the item tags have two uh, values to them. They have the item name, and they have the category value. And the value of each of these items is in the quotation marks. So we can see the first item name um, inside the quotes, we would put a name of a song. So uh, maybe, uh, you know, sound of music is a song. Okay. And the artist's name would be, oh gosh, Julie Andrews. Okay. Now that's really dating myself. Um, or maybe another song. How about the next song? Uh, how about Jailhouse Rock by Elvis? Okay. And what you need to do here, uh, once you have this open, uh, like this, is you need to go ahead and change uh, each of the items inside the quotation marks and put in, um, as you can see here, uh, seven different song names and their corresponding artist name. And as you can see, there are uh, seven of them here to get you started. If you want to do more, you may do more, but I want you to have at least seven uh, songs with the artist name uh, listed here in your list. Okay, so by the time you're done, uh, you'll have seven uh, edited just as I've done with these first two. Okay, once you do that, go ahead and go File, Save, and close the, the file again.